know what I'm doing. And three hundred. It's all right with me. Cards? I play these. Two. Dealer takes one. this. And a thousand more. You want to watch yourself. There's good money on my pipe, boy. I'd like to see its color. He's right. He don't know us. So how's he to know we're honest people? I'll guarantee you for Ronnie. In cash, uh, cigar butts. Well, uh, maybe I didn't make myself clear. I said I'll guarantee. Nice little place, this. Better remember it.
Just a moment. You guaranteeing for me, too? Uh-huh. Then looks like I'll have to up it another 500. Guess someone will have to guarantee for him, too. Yeah. Right, Lou? Uh-huh. Well, I can see you don't want to play anymore. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. Come to think of it, there's some guarantee I can give you. If you'll allow me. Come on, Lou. I'm starved. How about something to eat? We're closed, I told you. Where do I go to get some grub? All I care, mister. You can try hell. You know, I don't find that very funny. Well, that's your hard luck. <laughs> You guaranteeing, Lou? Sure, I'm guaranteeing. Me too? Sure, why not? Huh. That old hell broke loose. You never saw him before? Never. Ain't often you meet a type like that. So, you know him, huh? Yeah, I think so. He's the one I'm looking for. And a thousand more. You old fool. So you're down to playing solitaire, eh, Cat? It's a game you can play by yourself. You don't expect me to go riding around in the dark, I hope. You know something? I've begun believing in ghosts recently. So you've been looking for me? That's right. Why? A week ago, the mk &T train was robbed. One hundred thousand dollars in gold. A lucky hand. And no one escaped. No one to go around saying who it was. Professions. 
How many people do you know capable of pulling such a thing off? Lenny. Listen, I told you that none of the passengers survived, but it's not so. One did survive. And what's more, you haven't to live long enough to tell me just how it was done. And who did it? Come on. You're almost there. Don't wait all night. Bill. Our fancy friend Bill San Antonio. Just what are you getting at? I already got there. That's why you said you recently started believing in ghosts. <laughs> <sighs> Listen, there's 300 miles of railroad between El Paso and Canyon City. The gold was loaded at El Paso. Judging from the tracks left on the ground, it would appear the train was attacked at the halfway mark, here. But it would only appear so. Let me explain. Two days before the train moved out, the bandits did in fact show up around this area. They had themselves a nice little gallop around the rails so as to leave their hoof prints. Then they headed north, as far as the river. There, they followed the river a little while, then made off towards El Paso where they waited till the train was ready to go. After they bought their tickets, they climbed aboard like plain, ordinary passengers. They waited a few hours until they reached this point, about 20 miles from the Mexican border, near the little town of Puntal. Then they killed everybody. The engineer, a justice of the peace, the rest of the passengers, the whole train. And that's where they stopped, and where they unloaded the safe that contained the gold. After that, Two of their men got the train going and jumped off just before Canyon City. Obviously, from here north is where to search. But it's also obvious that neither the men from Canyon City nor the cavalry will ever find anyone. Because the bandits are all sitting real pretty right here, 250 miles to the south. Far as I know, there's only one man smart enough to organize and pull a big raid like this. And that's Bill San Antonio. His damn name's written all over it. Since when have dead men started going around robbing trains? I ain't saying I know how things went with you two a year ago, Cap. But one thing's sure, Bill's alive. And since the man who saw him on the train's dead, only two of us know it. I do. And now you. Even if you don't believe it. And the two of us have a certain advantage over Bill. Firstly, he doesn't know we've discovered he's alive. Secondly, we know where he's hiding. And then finally, having been so clever, our friend must consider that where he is, he's safe now. Aren't you going to say anything? <clears throat> Why are you so interested in this business? The Herald Bank took out a policy for the whole amount against its safe arrival. I work for the insurance company. You haven't changed a bit, you old jackass. Why don't you tell me what happened that night? Go to hell. you tell me what happened that night? <laughs> you sure are lucky, boy. <laughs> you couldn't have picked an easier chicken to pluck. Oh. He's not at all bad, your friend. 
Why wouldn't he show his pretty face till now? Because he wasn't around earlier, sweetheart. He just arrived today. Ah. <laughs> no way to treat a lady. Hey, you! Everything in due time. Around here like a bag of potatoes. I'll... Come on, get out of here. Get her! Shut up! <laughs> One hundred. Two hundred. Five hundred. All right. I want to see if you win if I shuffle the cards. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. It's just that I've never seen such a lucky bastard. It isn't luck. What is it then? In this game, you're what you always were. A beginner. Are you so sure? you question. You're much too curious. And curiosity can cost plenty. So curious. I'd like to know if you play with five cards just like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I don't want anybody laughing behind my friend's back because we've been friends ever since we were yay high, right old pretty face? <laughs> <laughs> no one laughs! Oh no me. He, 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 he. Now, everybody just take it easy. No, boy, no. That you shouldn't have done. One time, you'd never even thought of that. Because I was the one who put this tool in your hand and I showed you how to use it. <laughs> no, I swear that once once upon a time, you wouldn't have done that. It's easy to talk when you've got a gun in your hand. Now take it easy, you'll have one too. Don't worry, but we've got to do things calmly. Why, you don't think that a man in my position would agree to fight somebody who goes around fleecing people with five cards in his hand without thinking of all the eventual consequences, do you now? You know, they tell me that, uh, the last few years, you got pretty quick on the draw. If you're uh, as quick with a gun as you are with the cards, well, then I've got to think twice as hard. Because a man in my position has all sorts of responsibilities. <laughs> For instance, he's got to think about his men. Uh, look at them, hmm? What would they do, poor things, Without me, of course, they get my share of the savings because I'm, I'm very generous with my men. But that's not the only thing I got to think about. There's the key to... What would she do, poor thing, if I was to go get myself killed? What would she do? <laughs> <laughs> then there's a funeral to think about. There's bound to be at least one funeral. As far as I'm concerned, I want a nice funeral. The band playing, the whole town crying. Sermon? It works. Now, a funeral like that costs money. You can't expect me to pay for it. Well, my man, a Paquito, the townspeople, who sure are fond of me, but they have trouble making that kind of money. <laughs> Not like you, for example. So I think it would be real nice. If you just put that money down on the table that you won for me, which was formerly mine, for that matter. Because if you should happen to kill me, well, you wouldn't deny me the little I'm asking, would you now? Hmm? Good for you. Good for you. So you really think you're going to pull through, huh, old pretty face? Even though my sidekicks here ain't exactly soft-hearted. 
I bet you thought he wasn't even a friend of mine. Why, well, I bet you thought that on his own he never even thought of my funeral. But you see, you're wrong. Because he's a good friend, too bad to have to kill him. I treat my friends real good, so if he's the one you see going out that door, why, well, you just let him go. Because you all got to get out of here. Because no one's going to see the duel between two friends. No one's going to see which one was lucky afterwards. Now, Bud here will see to it that these rules are carried out. When you leave here, you set fire to the shack. Fire purifies. So no one will see the body of Bill San Antonio dead or the man who dared to challenge him, in which case you'll use the money for his funeral, not mine. Now, come, come, hurry up, children. Everybody outside. Give him a gun, bud. Now hurry up, bud. You go outside, too. And as soon as you get out there, set fire to the shack. Well, old pretty face, just you and me. <laughs> you know, I always liked a good joke. And who knows if this ain't the biggest joke of them all. Come on, quick! Don't get away with a pretty face. Even if you are a lot faster than me, my man will make you pay. And there's an awful lot of them. Whenever you're ready, pretty face. <laughs> If you're a lot faster than me, my man will make you pay. And there's an awful lot of them, pretty face. And there's an awful lot.
liked a good joke. And who knows if this ain't the biggest joke of them all. be hard to recognize him because he'll have done around 20 miles on foot and he ain't partial to walking. When he gets here, give him this horse. It's his. Quiet, Rose. No one's going to cut your throat. <gasps> when did you ride in? I reckon you must know things are pretty hot for you around here. <laughs> Some other time, Cat. I gotta get back. They're waiting. It won't take too long. I just want to get a piece of information. <laughs> How do you like that? Here I was thinking you'd come for me. I only came up for a minute to fix my face. What you got in your mind, then? Rose, I want you to tell me everything you know about what happened that night. What night? Stop playing around. Oh, that was ages ago. Ten months. For me, it's ages. It's not that I blame you, Cat. No, not one way or the other. But on account of that lousy business, I lost my man. And from what I hear, it's you who cooked his goose. Who was he? Joe Tom Tom. Who wouldn't brag about it? In any case, we got along all right. And besides, he was generous. Be real nice to find a man like him again. Anyway, I wasn't after him. No, I imagine you weren't. But after they discovered how you outfoxed him like you did, they had to come after you. You're rolling in cash now, eh, Cat? What do you mean? Oh, come on. Everybody knows that while we were all attending Bill's funeral, you went off with the loot. Listen, Rose. Your tom-tom, -tom maybe, could have swallowed that story. But you, you're too smart to believe in fairy tales. Well, who else could have done it? Yes? What are you up to in there, Rose? We're waiting on you. Well, go on waiting. I'll be down. Why'd you lock the door? Look, I said I'll be down. Now, leave me alone. At least let me come in, Rose. No, go away. You can't come in. Hey, who's in there? I heard you talking. Listen. I'll tell you something. Since the day I met you, I talked to myself, and that's a fact. Open it! Open it all, Rose, or I'll break it down! You want to take a bet I lose this one, too? What did you say? I said go to hell! <laughs> well, hope he didn't hurt himself too much. After all, he's not bad at heart. Yeah, I noticed. 
Tell me everything you know and be quick about it. I, uh... I haven't got much time. I get paid for mine, Cat. Well, Bill San Antonio's orders got carried out. He was given a funeral. It was one of the best attended affairs I've ever seen. Yeah, believe me, it was a first-class funeral. Bill San Antonio, the greatest shot in the world. God killed him by treachery, otherwise no. <laughs> that was the coffin maker's way of saying, otherwise he wouldn't have died. Right after the ceremony, the men went off to the concha to divide the gold that had been saved from a hundred holdups. They were in seven men, because now they could divide Bill San Antonio's share too. Tom Tom had told me he'd be getting enough out of it to bury the past and start a brand new life together with me. But when they reached the cave, they were in for a nasty surprise. The gold was gone. Only one man could have done it, and I know who he is. Yeah, we made a mistake last night letting him go. But I don't think he ever left this place. I'm sure he stayed around to see what we were doing. So that when we went into town to the funeral, he had plenty of time to clear out with the gold. But right now, I swear to God, he won't have much time to enjoy it. Bill thought his death would split up the gang. But he never imagined that anyone would try this. Since everybody in town had been to San Antonio's funeral, he easily convinced the others. And so they all went after him. A month later, Tom Tom came back and said that Bud had disappeared the first night. And Bud was the one who said it was me. The others went on looking for you. But by now they were divided. Soon they got to thinking that Sharon was no good and split up, all hoping to grab the loot. <laughs> I tried to get Tom Tom to change his mind. It was no good. He stayed for one night. And when he left, he promised to come back. And now here you are instead. He's... He was a handsome man, Tom Tom. Generous man, too. Bud was the one who gave me the gun. Give him a gun, Bud. I gotta go, Rose. When they went away, they almost destroyed my trade. Ain't no one drops dead around here anymore. Except a few regulars every now and then. So to earn a living, I gotta do other things. 
Still, precision works. Always been my favorite pastime. If you don't mind, I'll get on with it. Listen, Grandpa. Yeah? Was it you who made Bill San Antonio's coffin? Uh, who do you suppose if not me? Then it was you who put him in it. Yeah, it sure was. Of course, there wasn't really much left of him to tell the truth. What do you mean? Well, I mean it weren't no pretty sight. It looked like he'd already been to his natural destination. How to hell? I'm back again. So if they told you to swear, it was really the body of Bill San Antonio you nailed up in that coffin. You wouldn't be able to. But weren't you the one who shot him dead? I asked you a question. And you got my answer! <laughs> How do you expect me to recognize him? from a few charred remains. Why have you brought yourself way over here? Because you want to play guessing games, is that it? If you'd have come to me and said, I solemnly swear I never laid a finger on Bill San Antonio, then I'd have been obliged to answer you. If you want my opinion, you know I don't believe that old buzzard ever dropped dead. No siree. Because, young fella, I never was one to believe in ghosts at all. And hereabouts, there are some folks willing to swear on a stack of Bibles, and they've seen him on that black horse of his just galloping through the night. <laughs> of course, now you'll be thinking, you know, Bill San Antonio was too important for people not to be talking about him. And I agree. But what I say is, there's a mighty big difference between that and uh, making legend. Of course, you might say no. It's just that folk thrive on legend. And if they don't have them, it ain't so simple. Telling stories around the fire of their grandchildren during the long, wintry months. Thanks for the drink, Grandpa. It was good seeing you again. Just remember one thing. If I wasn't sure that you were the very man who killed him, I'd be ready to swear that Bill San Antonio we're still alive. I swear to God, Grandpa. He's gonna be mighty sorry he isn't dead. Shouldn't have looked up. Curiosity is a bad habit. Yeah. Sorry, friend. Too bad. Listen, rabbits, tonight we brought you all some nice, interesting news. Uh. So, you don't care, huh?
That's better. Now you care. You're about to receive a guest, an important one, too. It's the new representative of the law, and you're going to give him customary honors. Up on your feet, rabbits! Now, don't keep our distinguished guest waiting. He might catch cold. Hmm. All right. Come on. Vamos, amigo. Vamos. Te están esperando. <laughs> Now you're going to be introduced to him. After all, if the new lawman's going to look after your interests, he's got to know you. One by one. You. Come here. The new lawman wants to know your name. Out with it. Uh, Jose. To him, and louder. Uh, Jose. Jose what? Uh, Hernandez. This name mean anything to you, mister? You mean, you mean it was Jose who asked for a lawman to come here? I just don't believe that our friend Jose could do such an awful thing like calling it the lawman. Right, they deserve to get punished. Huh? No, we don't want to be that hard with them. After all, they're really decent folk. And they won't do it anymore. Now, why don't you tell the chief? You won't do it anymore. Did you hear that, chief? He says that they won't do it anymore. Stop it! Can't do this. It's real fortunate we're around to help them respect the law. Jose, why don't you offer your visitor a drink? A law man is usually very sensitive to the sight of blood. Come on, offer the law man something to drink. Senor Hernandez. Senor Hernandez. Well? <laughs> huh? Go on. <laughs>
A new lawman around here won't give us any trouble. Where'd you find him? A few miles out of town. He was on his way there. Anyone see you? No. No one. Then Bud get out. Great idea. What idea? Nothing. Uh, just a joke. Let's hear the story. You know I don't like it when anybody else plays the jokes. You had specific orders. To get rid of the newcomer and that's all, without going into the village. I want to know when anybody else shows up. And no one is to leave the way someone did a few days ago. <laughs> you know, he's a nice boy, our bud, but evidently he doesn't have a good memory. Perhaps uh, this will freshen it up for him. You know, Bud, there's a lot of things you can learn from me, but there's one thing it's pointless for you to try to copy. It's this. You're an imbecile, Bud. This you've got to realize. Imbecile! 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 Have you finally learned your lesson? Imbecile! Imbecile! What are you looking at? Another, another. I haven't seen a bed in two days, and I feel like I need a good sleep before I leave. The first to the right. And I don't want to be disturbed, mister. You have come to the right place.
¿Qué pasa? Who's this? You know him, Jesus? Miguel? Why don't you ask him? Now, I'm real curious to know how you got in here. So far as I know, there's only one door. Get me down. <laughs> you hear that, Miguel? He wants to get down. All right, now out with it. What's your name and what are you here for? Let me down. I won't talk to anybody but San Antonio. You must be crazy, amigo. Who do you want to see? San Antonio. Then why not meet the Almighty while you're at it? Let me down. I want to speak to your chief, whatever he calls himself now. All right, fella. You deal with us or with nobody. Our chief's off watching another kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Ha! <sighs> 
You're a favor, friend. the train robbery. You see, I was right. Get your paws out of there. They may be coming back here anytime. Ah, forget it, bud. I'm thirsty. make it by ourselves bringing this damn chest out of here yeah you're right with two of us we're never gonna make it <sighs> I got some news Why don't you ask the Padron who came here today? <laughs> well, why didn't you say that we got company? But you did not ask, Senor Bud. I'm asking you now, Robert, you hear? Who is it? A stranger. He is going tomorrow. And where is he now? Upstairs, sleeping. Go on, hurry up. Hey, it's heavy. Now, get under it. What are you waiting for? Cut it down. Now follow my boots. I'm not gonna make it. You better make it if you don't want to get yourself crushed to oh. death. Hey, wait. Where are you going? He is a very heavy sleeper, senor. What did you say? He does not answer. Amigo, why don't you come on out? We'll have a little game of cards.
take care of you later. Get your horses! Help me get it off! No, you gotta go through with it. Take it off! Take it off! You damn well better make it unless you want to get crushed under that chest. Bill will laugh. He'll die laughing when he sees you dead as a doornail under his gold. Take it off! Hurry up, will ya? You dumb idiot. He always thought you were all muscle and no brains. And he's right. You're a coward. A lousy, stinking coward. That damn mule ain't never gonna make it from there to here. But the chest will. But the chest will. Oh, no! Oh, yeah! Miguel! 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 Swimming's the only way to avoid going over that. If you leave me here, I'll kid you. <laughs> I forgot you can't swim. Well, that's your funeral. It's not exactly what you call war. Still, come on. What are you waiting for? You can hang on to me. <laughs> hey, Captain, when you got me under that chest, what the hell did you call me? Ah, I remember now. It was coward. A lousy, stinking coward. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, I'm going. Hey, wait! Hold it.
It was a good idea to bury the chest. It'll be safer up there on the hill than in a bank while we're gone. We're going somewhere. Sure, we gotta go and let the company know that you're not thinking of sticking around here, are you? Your friend still owes me 10,000 bucks from that last little poker game. No, no. You're coming with me. Because you got me out of that pond, doesn't give you the right to decide what I do. I mustn't do. It would have been better just to have left you in that pond out there, as you call it. <laughs> you wouldn't have gotten very far. Once the insurance company knows, your percentage, Cat, will be more than enough to make up for your losses. That's a different matter. And besides, who told you I'd accept a percentage? The point is, You're the one who works for the insurance company, not me. So that's the way you're gonna play it. Then I'll have to make sure you come along with me. Let's settle it right now. Gunfire could be heard a long way off. And this isn't the place or the moment to start making a lot of noise, old jackass. I know of another way of convincing you. There's one thing I don't understand. What? What? Just why the hell you want me to smash in that pudding face of yours? Come down! Come here! Okay. Here's to you. Whoever would have thought we'd all be together again after all these years. Yeah, who'd have thought it? <sighs> you can go along, trust your old friends. Go along calmly, minding your own business. They come along, kill three men, steal. And show every intention of waltzing off without even saying goodbye. Listen, dead man, what name do you go under now? Now, wouldn't it be a wonderful world if everybody just minded their own business? <laughs> That's not what you thought when you sent for me a year ago. All that fuss over a few blanks. That's yours. <laughs> you know, you mean to thank me, I imagine. On that particular occasion, I could have easily shot you as dead as a doornail. It wasn't worth it to you. 
it was more convenient for you to have a nice little decoy for your men to run after. <laughs> Wasn't a bad idea at that. In one fell swoop, I got rid of all them flea-bitten sheriffs that was hanging around my neck. And that gang that I'd gotten fed up with. What a pleasure it is to live incognito. By the way, who was it told you that I was hanging around these parts? You didn't kill everybody on that train. One of them lived long enough. Long enough to come and give me the good news that you were still alive and kicking. Hmm. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you, you got to do everything by yourself. You can't trust no one. Ain't that right, bud? I have to remember that in the future. Huh. There won't be any future for you, dead man. <laughs> you know, that's what I call ingratitude. I guess they just don't know when they're well off. You go and save them from people who would have slaughtered them like cattle, and what happens? They refuse to tell you where they've hidden the gold, because you have hidden it. Only an imbecile like Bud here would believe that it fell into the river. Just have to look at your faces to know that. <laughs> I wonder which one of you will have the toughest hide. The big one, I imagine, but you never can tell. What do you think, Bud? Oh, that's right, Bud doesn't think he's been ordered not to think. Otherwise, you'd both be dead ducks by now. Still, who else can tell us what we want to know if not them? Oh, you think that they won't talk? Well, you're wrong. And who knows which one will put us on the right path? The weakest one, you think? Well, you're wrong again. Because if you hold two men, or two animals, for that matter, in balance. It never happens that they both die at the same instant. <laughs> you know, I've known you a long time. You might even say forever. I know exactly the things that you can't stand. Now, Bud and, uh, Tago and myself have prepared a little special entertainment for you. up your arm when you're ready to talk, pretty face. Tago. 
While I'm away, no one is to come through this door. Is that clear? Not Bud or Petrito. No one is to come in here for any reason till I come back. Shoot anyone who disobeys, you understand? It might take him a little while to decide to talk, but, uh... Well, we're in no hurry, so just take your time. Now, bolt this door from the inside. I don't want to see your faces. We'll get the gold back. Bud and Tago know what they have to do. No one's to disturb them, and no one's to let them out of his sight either. You two, watch Bud down at the well from up here. Go on. If he leaves for one minute, shoot him in the legs. Dead men have a nasty habit of not being able to talk. Pedrito and his men will watch the cellar from the outside. I don't want Tiger to get out either. Why not let us take care of those two gringos? Obey orders. Vamanos. Come on, baby. It's bat time again. Listen, don't tell anyone else and I'll take you there. You won't have to divide it with anyone. Why don't you think it's over? This was a place. Take it easy, friend. Being in a hurry, a man can make bad mistakes. Uh, who's saying anything different? Your gun. Look where your hand is. Better. Untie me. Come on and be quick.
It's about here. Start digging. No, you're gonna do the digging. Go on, dig, you heard me. Did anyone ever tell you that you're... that you're a dumb bastard, bud? They were in it together. Otherwise, how could they have gotten away? Is that true? When? I found out about an hour ago. It was Flat Face's turn at the window. I woke up and he just wasn't there anymore. Then I found him at the well with his throat slit. So, you were asleep. Yeah, but only for a few minutes. And it was his turn to stand Is watch. So, why didn't you follow him? The horses. What? All they left were these saddles. That's why I say they were in it together. It is impossible. That son of a dog did not hear them when they left. What? 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 They were even smart enough to wrap the horses' hooves before letting them go. A good job at one that takes time. So he only slept a few minutes, huh? Yes. 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 What about us? What are we supposed to do? Try not to fall asleep! Ah! Ah! A drink. Might be that you're just the man I'm looking for. Me? What for? Do you think you can remember six words in the right order? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good for you. Then take the horse you'll find outside and tell the boss of that gang it's time to go on with the poker game we started a year ago. Yes, yes, yes. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, yes, I think so. Yes. Good for you. <laughs> Seeing as how you've got such a good memory. Yes. You might do me another little favor. Yes. Yes. Tell him I don't like to be kept waiting. Abri, cabron! Abri! Cabron, I want to have a word with the gringo! Open the door! The other one is gone! He went off with Bart. I want to take care of this one. Leave him to me. I said open the door. Are you crazy, Tago? I said leave him to me, you son of a dog.
You gotta let me go. I was sent out here to talk to your boss. Come on, you can speak to us. Hey, you. Where'd you get a hold of that horse? Listen, let me go. I gotta talk to Mr. Bud right now. He'll buy me more than a drink when I give him the news I brought. I'm real happy I've been able to find you. Now, will you help me out by taking me to him, mister? Where'd you get that horse? Back in town. He belongs to the stranger. Where is he? In the saloon, I expect, mister. He's waiting. What he said, he said... <laughs> Gringo alive, do you understand? Too many people. Oh. Yeah, too many people. Well, part. You'll have to do the shooting by yourself, if that amuses you. You know, I don't like to play without stakes, and in every self-respecting poker game, they're generally laid out on the table. All right. Let's go. Uh, what's the hurry? There's no rush. I'd like to make you a proposal first. You know, a year ago, I was forced to put on that little circus sack. There were too many eyes on me. Everybody wanted to get their hands on the reward that was hanging over my head and kept on getting bigger. You couldn't trust anyone anymore. Not even my own man. You see, pretty face? I had no other choice, I assure you. Now, you are the one that took the brunt. And I'm sorry. I've come back to pay damages. That wasn't what you said to me yesterday. That was yesterday. But what matters in business is who's the strongest. Yesterday I was, and I assure you I still would be if I hadn't had to leave. But I had an appointment with somebody too important to be kept waiting. And I wasn't wrong, because I've managed to swing a much more important deal than the bone we're squabbling over now. My proposition? Very simple. How about it, boy? Let's pull off this deal together. Just you and me like old times. And what about our friend? Well, let me explain to you what the deal is. And our friend? Well, I don't think we have to worry about him. He's in good hands. <laughs> One thing you haven't got clear, dead man. I'm dealing the cards this time. We've got two different points of view. I wouldn't come this far if it was to go into partnership with somebody like you. Now, hold on a minute. Did you ever ask yourself, just where what those morons call my good luck comes from? 
how come all these years I've been able to pull off nothing but big jobs without ever once getting caught? I'll tell you. The El Paso Bank president insures his shipments when they're important and tells me not only the day and the time that they're being sent, but also what safety measures have been taken by the insurance company. I take care of the rest. Then we split the profits 50-50. Half for me, no risk for me, and no risk for him. A real good business, ma'am. As a matter of fact, it was him who advised me to disappear a year ago. Listen, pretty face. You're the first person in the world I ever told this to. And do you know why? Why? Because I know I can trust you. You're wrong, dead man. As I told you, we've got two different points of view. There's only one way I can go along with yours. Play with the stakes on the table. <laughs> Do you know what I think, dead man? I think I'll offer you what you so kindly offered me a year ago. Ah, uh, it's... Might difficult to set fire to a pile of rocks, ain't it, old pretty face? Not fire. Dynamite. Just the right amount to send you flying nice and high. And no tricks this time. Both of you. You mean you don't want to join in the fun? Where I come from, we don't play at the same table with hyenas. That's a mistake you're making. Dead hyenas don't talk. Explain yourself better. The chest, as you see, is right where we left it. But that doesn't mean it still contains anything. Have a look if you don't believe me. So, you all were cheating. Now, you're not gonna let a joke like that worry you. Shut up, you two! Back away!
your last dirty trick, dead man. And now hurry up. One paw less doesn't mean very much to a man like you. <clears throat> I want to see what you're capable of now. for it. Were you born so heavy for Pete's sakes? dream, you know. I dreamt that a mountain crashed right down on top of me. Hell, my shoulders ache. Oh. Hmm. Where are we headed to? North. You get that piece of lead you got yourself saddled with out of you, you old jackass. But what about this? We'll discuss it when you're strong enough to hold a gun. <laughs> 